Hey everyone, welcome to podcast number 32. Um, Five Pin Universe is happy to bring you all these podcasts and hopefully it's some insightful information. I'm your host, Kerry Kreitz. We have one half of the Wiseman twins here today, Dexter. The better half. <laughs> Adam Agreed. Weber and Tracy Smith from our last podcast. And our special guest for this week is Jen Baldwin. Won a bronze medal with Edmonton Mixed Team in 2013 in Newfoundland with the Open, is the E5 Secretary and Event Coordinator, and the WCBT's Executive Secretary. So our first podcast topic will be the C5 announced its 2020 Hall of Fame. Um, obviously, uh, it was crazy to see the names on there, and we'll have Dexter read them off. All right, so uh, we will start with builders. Um, this year they had John Hoffman from Regina, Saskatchewan, and uh, the uh, the Don Sim from Calgary, uh, famous around here. Uh, for coaches, we have Jeff McMullen from Winnipeg, and then we have four players inducted uh, from. Coquillam, BC, Dougie Mosdale. Uh, he was there at the induction last year. Uh, it was absolutely awesome to see him there. So um, it's nice to see his name in here. Uh, we have Doug McCaw from Regina, Saskatchewan. Uh, we have Gino Zebarth from Millet, Alberta. And we have Adam Weber from Edmonton and Calgary. <laughs> so congratulations, Adam. Uh, how do you feel about being on this list? Well, for, first of all, uh, honestly, the, the incredible honor. Um, th thrilled to be on the list. Uh, I don't know. I, I've had uh, quite a few people reach out and, and you know, you know, congratulate it, etc. Uh, definitely appreciate all, all that that support. Um, quite quite frankly, I, I, I still think it's it's too early in my career. Um, I. I I kind of feel that it, it, it's a bit difficult to, to fully grasp everything uh, just with the fact that I, I still play at a very high competitive level. And, you know, I, I kind of feel like a hall of fame is kind of near the end of a, a career type type of a scenario. Um, it, it just, it seems really odd. I, I can't, you know, fully grasp uh, the, the, the whole concept of it uh, just, just yet for my name in there. Um, you know, being a part of, of the, the classes here, uh, you mentioned Don Sim and uh, as well as, you know, Gino Zebarth, uh, Dougie McCaw, Dougie Mosdell, uh, two, two class uh, of our sports, especially here in Western Canada. Uh, Gino, quite frankly, you know, likely should have been in that first ballot, in, in my personal opinion. Um, uh, all incredible names uh, for, from the first ballot as well. Um, but yeah, no, just just true, truly honored, and quite frankly, I hope to be bowling at the event uh, this year as well. So, yeah, um, I guess that's something I'll talk about. So there was a few people that talked to me about who was going to get nominated and stuff like that, and that was my thought process exactly the same, Adam. I there's no doubt in my mind that you would have made Hall of Fame no matter what, even if you retired now. But to induct somebody that's at the pretty much the peak of their career seems kind of off-putting to me. It's just like, okay, you're in the Hall of Fame. What else do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Even though you know you're going to be in the Hall of Fame in the future, it just it seemed kind of, I don't know, seemed a little premature to me. But that's what the C5 really want to show their appreciation for what you've done, obviously. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, I feel I'm torn on it too. Like I, I, I get, I get what you're saying, but at least uh, with, with the guidelines that they created, it's, it's pretty cut and dry. Like, Hey, these are the people that have the highest nominations or, you know, the highest points out of the system. And these are the people that should go in. And I, I, I mean, I, I totally understand what you're saying there, Adam, but at the same time, I, I think people should be able to appreciate it. I mean, you talk about retirement on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe they finally took you seriously, but at the, at the same time, you could walk across the street and get hit by a car. At least, at least in the, in in your time period, you have been recognized and, and you're you're able to appreciate it. Mm -hmm. 
you, you just you never know you never know right so i mm. i like it but uh i'm not the one getting the award so yeah no i i, I totally agree with you guys it, it's it, it's something that uh you know I'll obviously i'll cherish and uh I, I truly believe you know at some point in my career uh that that honor was was likely going to be bestowed um but it, it, it just seems hard to reflect on the past when I'm still thinking forward, right? I'm looking forward. I'm, I'm looking at the next event, the next potential title. I've, I've, I've got future goals rather than looking at the past. So it's, I, I don't think it, it's certainly hit me as much as maybe it hit, it hit Doug McCaw, right? Uh, I was speaking with uh, Annette earlier this week and, uh, uh, she was mentioning, you know, a conversation that she had with, uh, with Dougie and, uh, just how elated he is and, and, and rightfully so, right. You really should be in that moment, right. It, it's, it, I, I can't even, you know, put it into words because like w when I saw that originally, I, I, just, I didn't have that effect of it because quite frankly, I'm still looking forward in this game, but I, I understand what you mean, you know. Uh, Tim said the exact same thing to me. You know, do, what happens if uh, if you do get hit by a car? You know, some, something else happens. At least you have a chance to you know accept that that award while while you're alive, right? So I, I get both sides of it. I, I, the the resume would have at some point spoken for itself. Um, it's it, it just it, it feels too early, but uh, extremely thrilled either way. Yeah, yeah, but I, I think you're kind of an anomaly to the rest of it. The, there's a lot of people that it, it takes for for what you have accomplished in your time period it takes people a lot of people a lot longer to accomplish that right i i think i think you're what an anomaly to get to that number ahead of schedule is is that setting a dangerous precedent though where let's say tyler tiggett makes it makes all these accomplishments by the time he's 26 does he get in like, you know, I, I, the, the precedent may be set, but you have to remember that the guidelines are in place, mm -hmm. right? So and it, it is, you know, there, there's a, a number of guidelines to, to get to whatever that minimum mark mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in your first five, six years. Uh, you, you can go out there and win, you know, five or six gold medals. So you still might not be there with, you know, average and, and all the other, you know, criteria to, to get in, right? So yeah, you are now one of five guys, right, to hit that number. Yeah, one of five, right? So and and, yeah. and I've been doing this twenty years, right? It's I yeah no I I totally understand what you're saying, but it's not saying that somebody can't beat your record, right? I I mm -hmm. wish there was an age limit, like in a lot of the other sports, either you retire or it's an age set, right? Um, not saying that it's wrong. I just personally, I would rather see if the person's not retired, then they have to reach this certain age, then they would be eligible to be inducted. And yeah, you're right. Anybody could be hit by the bus. That that shouldn't be that shouldn't be an explanation as to why they inducted him. No, the 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 reason why they inducted is because he hit that number. Yeah, that's that's the reason. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you you could say something about you know somebody like Gino who's still playing extremely competitive and what is he he's, he's got to be 60s now he's, like close, yeah. close to 60 no he's right so 60, yeah. like he, he he's the, he's the guy that's never going to retire mm -hmm. so exactly. they, and they, this is a sport where there really is no retirement age that's why i right? would like so, to see a, like i said i would like to see a set age if it was 50 yeah. 55 60 65 whatever the age is it's set but like you said there's a point system set in place and that's what they went by mm -hmm. it just I don't know. Like you said, Adam, you're, you're still at the peak here performing. You're still probably going to be winning multiple golds from here on in. It just seems a little off, but it is what it is. And we're here to critique. We're not here to fix. That's everybody else's job. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that being said, um, Jen, since you're our hmm. special guest, we'll just jump right into some questions. Unless sure. Tracy, Jen, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. If you guys had any input on the C5 Hall of Fame inductions, I think it was a good segue. You you hit the good segue. So <laughs> okay, perfect. <clears throat> hey, um, Jen. So who was your bowling mentor growing up? Uh, well, I guess <clears throat> I'll segue a little bit from the uh, C5. I did actually have um, 
an opportunity. Doug and I know have known each other a really long time, Mosdell, and um, he and I email because he works in the same business as I do. And I emailed him when I had heard, and I just said, you know, congratulations. I'm so proud of you. There's no one more deserving. Um, and and he was just in shock, and he was really proud. And he said, I'm so excited to tell the mortars and the howls. <laughs> And my dad actually is going to meet up with him probably when he's in town next week. But, um, you know, those, I, I was really lucky in growing up in BC. We did have a lot of really great people that I knew through my dad and everyone. Um, I don't know if I have a specific mentor. I, there's a lot of people, men and women, that I have a lot of respect for um, in this game. And I've just really been lucky to surround myself with some really great people in my years of bowling. Is that a roundabout answer? Well, that, that, works, that works perfect. No favorites. <laughs> okay, now to put you on the spot, what's your favorite tournament? Um, you know, I, I'm, again, going to go back to my BC roots, and I wish it's, it was something we could start here. But um, the Pacific Coast and Fraser Valley in BC is like a mini open, um, and it's a weekend away with all the centers in the lower mainland playing together. Um, I think it'd be harder to do in Alberta per se, but I've had some of the best times in my life bowling in those tournaments. So I'm gonna say those two. And I wish, I, I hope they keep going. They need to work on those because some of the best times. Awesome. Um, yeah. So do you have a match in your career that sticks out in your mind that was uh, something that you always remember or was tough or? Um, I think probably my whole experience of being part of the BC ladies team in 2009. Um, it was my first um, nationals ever in my whole career. Um, I never made it in any youth um, tournaments. So um, I had some pretty cool experiences bowling against the Alberta ladies team and the Manitoba ladies team. And I made some really good friends there as well. But I, re I mean, I remember playing... Uh, Tracy, you guys were all on that team, I do believe, that year. Am I wrong? I mean, I, I don't remember. I don't remember. Yes, I, I do not remember yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Um, I, I just really remember um, just the fierce competitiveness, and it just really will stick with me the rest of my life. So, I'm, I mean, it's not a specific match again. No. Roundabout no. answer again, but no. No <laughs> I should have thought of these. These are normal <laughs> questions. <laughs> Uh, so what bowling equipment do you use? Um, currently, I just have some uh, Dexter SST, I don't know, what what are they? Does anyone know? SST8? I don't know sure. what they're called. Anyway, they're bowling shoes. <laughs> and I use um, <laughs> uh, my purple soft rolls that Mark got for me for Christmas about 10 years ago. And I kind of tend to stick to those. I actually just added my Paramounts back into my bag. Um, and I just need to start trying some more things probably, which is not something I normally do. Okay. Usually kind of stick to the same thing and just run with it. Uh, what's on your bucket list? What do you want to accomplish in the game of five pin bowling? You know, that's, that's a hard question too. Um, I, I mean, I'd love to go back to any nationals, um, at all, um, I mean, making an, a, a ladies or mixed team in Edmonton, um, I think is really tough. And it's a lot different than um, my years bowling in BC. Sometimes there was situations where you just had to throw a ball and you made a team. And that's most definitely not the case here. Um, so I think just, you know, just making more teams and working on my game a little more to get myself back to what I was at in past years. That's a good answer. Thanks. Um, and you've been part of the WCBT for like the last three or four years, um, helping us improve the professional side. Is there any other aspect of the game you wish would improve? Or how, do you have any ideas how we could improve stuff like that? I think we're really um, taking things in the right direction. I think that um, like what Tracy and I and you guys all did in the last couple of weeks is a step in the right direction too. I think that um, we are all equal and I think that we just need to promote that a little more for our game in all aspects. I mean, we had our Edmonton five pin meeting last night and we were talking about how to get some more POA bowlers out to 
uh, the IP trials, for example. And, and it's just, you know, putting the thought into how to get it. I think that's just a good start, you know, whether, whether things come to fruition or not, at least you're trying your hardest, you know, and putting your love into the game. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I guess that kind of will throw us into a segue into probably a reason most of our listeners are here right now is uh, last week we had Tracy Smith on the podcast and it was one of the best podcasts we ever had. She gave us lots of ideas and um, she was inspired after the podcast to do a little raffle off. She wanted to donate another uh, WCBT membership and that reach that we posted, I do believe it was almost two weeks ago now, has mm-hmm. reached over 6,000 people. Um, just shows the community that this little five pin universe has and um, we appreciate everybody sharing commenting liking that post and trying to spread the word and from that one thing that tracy came up with um which she was inspired by jen she got two other ladies that wanted to do the same thing melissa manor from the east coast and karen armstrong from winnipeg um pretty amazing so we're gonna have three different memberships to raffle off for the the lucky ladies that commented liked and shared <laughs> our post and uh this is perfect time to bring tracy in and you let us know what you're thinking trace well thank you for <clears throat> kind of a little intro um what i do want to say is that i can't believe after just doing a one hour session with you guys in that podcast got you know got me to think a little bit different and i started to feel that during kind of the one our session where we all kind of like talking back and forth and then you know the very next day as we were sort of sharing comments um on i am um jen posted something and so jen posted something that sort of just ignited you know a facebook post um really regarding you know how less women are bullying versus men um you know that really seven women joined um join the tour out of, I think, 47, I think, if I recall, um, Carrie, that you said bold on the tour without it, without the membership, but really the conversion on that was only 14%. And then, you know, Jen threw out, you know, her goal basically was just to kind of two times the membership, right. Which is kind of, kind of a, you know, odd, odd thing, because it's really like you're only trying to get 15 women, um, out of a potential, let's just say 50, um, and the goal also was for her to maybe potentially see one woman bull in the final tour championship round. And I start to think about that post and she got 41 likes on that post. Doesn't seem like a lot, but I mean, every like, every, you know, heart, um, 11 comments, you know, people sharing got me to just kind of think almost instantly. Like I was very distracted at work. And I didn't know if it was the right thing or not, but uh, just started to like um, share the idea of maybe throwing out, you know, giving away a membership. Like I didn't want to be um, associated with it at all, honestly. Um, I just kind of wanted to empower um, the tour. Um, And I just thought it was really interesting. And I think within a couple of hours, everybody just kind of held on to it and owned it. And then all of a sudden there was this like big posting. And I just think the, the impact of the idea, I think now looking back on it is pretty um, inspiring. Um, I think it, it encourages men and women. And I think honestly, my phone the very next day was on fire. Mm -hmm. It was on fire from men and it was on fire from women. So people had taken already the time to kind of listen to the podcast and it was all just really, really positive. And I think now I'm like looking back even two weeks later, just thinking about this community. And I, I, I know that a lot of us are like really close and you know what, a lot of us go through marriages together, graduations, we see our kids, you know, uh, growing up before us, we go through divorces, Um, you know, we have to attend funerals, and all of those things. And I think now I, I just look at it, and I'm like, this is so much more of a community than I thought that we had, like, I always felt like it was really close to home. 
but I feel like it's it's much bigger for me today after going through kind of what we've gone through. So honestly, just want to thank you for the support on the idea. I don't think the ideas are going to stop, honestly, if, um, you know, Jen and I have anything to do with it. Um, and really, it, the intention of the whole thing was to come from a place of passion for the sport and the encouragement of women to compete at the highest level, right? Mm-hmm. In this broad group mm-hmm. of such competitive, fierce forces, whether you're male or female. Now, I think the thing that surprised me as well is just having you know, someone who lives in Newfoundland reach out to me the very next day. And, um, you know, I've got an unbelievable friendship with her. Uh, We've shared a lot of things through the years. And then she offers, you know, another free membership. And it, it became a little overwhelming, honestly, but we just accepted it in full force. And then to have someone like Karen Armstrong, um, who, you know, we is suffering from an injury and has this selfless act to say, you know what, I could join, I could join and just put my name in, but I'm, I'm unable to like play at this point because of our injury, but just say, you know, what do you want me to do? I'll either like enter myself or have a selfless act Mm -hmm. and say, I'd like to give it to somebody else. And then all of a sudden, yeah, who can bowl. And to me, like, you know, I was just a little overwhelmed with, um, with um, people's, you know, thoughts. I wanted to share some of those thoughts because I think they're really important. The time who's, you know, those people who spent time to listen to the, to the uh, podcast and then to respond for the opportunity to get, you know, part of the raffle was pretty exciting. So these are some of the things that we heard and I'm not going to name the people, but um, just wanted to share a couple of thoughts. So one comment, no better feeling than surrounding yourself with kick-ass women. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, right? Another, actually a guy, uh, the guys need to step up, I think, or I may have to identify as a woman soon. Meaning he wanted the same opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. Which I thought was very cool. This is awesome. So many women deserving of this. Uh, Might have to try it out this year. Um, Excellent idea. Um... I'm just kind of scrolling through some of the comments um, right now. There was a really good one. Should be an exciting year. Uh, Another one calls out a specific person. You know, you need to go for this. Uh, Strong woman, strong post, heck yes. Mm -hmm. This is getting exciting. Um, So I think the main thing that I'm trying to say is that I felt like people, women particularly, it became a community um, I am going to call out Katie Rayner because she posted something today and I thought it really just um, said what we were trying to achieve all along. This is such a good idea and so uplifting to see our ladies supporting and promoting other women. We do not often get caught up in competing against each other, but it's nice to see the other side of this amazing community. So it's just really powerful, right? It's a, it's just a lot of small steps that I think is just going to help us move forward in the future um, in the tour holistically. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Trace. It's amazing to see um, all the comments and everybody stepping up and even just the comments towards you, praising you for stepping up and doing this and Jen for inspiring you. And it's a, uh, pretty awesome to see such a small post it literally took no time at all to get it up and running and to Mm -hmm. see the outpouring of support all across the country um something that five pin universe wants to continue to do to help out to not only the wcbt but five pin bowling across canada right we're not here just to support one association Mm -hmm. um and unreal to see you guys (laughs) put money literally where your mouths are and try and support what you think is right and help women get back into the sport. Because unfortunately there was a stigma by posted by a few females before that they figured that they weren't being represented enough. And I don't know if it's a money thing, a family thing. We've discussed it many times in the past, 
but I'm just happy to see that hopefully it's starting to turn around and we get to see the ladies of the sport play because they definitely can play. Well, and I've had, I've had the comment made <clears throat> and that it's a boys club. And, and I, I just think that's kind of a cop out. It's only a boys club. If you let it be, if you do not, if you choose to not be on the tour or part of the tour and support the tour, then you're letting it be a boys club. You're letting just the guys join. So why not step up and be like, Hey, no, let's do this. You know, yeah. don't let it be. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't have to be right. Yeah. This isn't a Wednesday night men's night out at a golf course. People, this is, this is the Western Canadian bowling tour. It's All open to anybody <laughs> yeah. that can participate. <clears throat> it's all a choice mm -hmm. and I, I think we're going in the right direction and just having I mean the I mean the fact that Tracy Smith says that I inspired her just by a quick conversation while she was bowling by the WCBT table last year <laughs> and I, I I mean I all I did all I did was I mean I said to the guys um, earlier I'm like hey I'm gonna get six women or seven women and I was like that's my one goal like I'll beat the drum if I have to and there's Tracy standing there. Hey, Tracy, let's come on, be a member. And then, I mean, it takes no effort at all just to inspire someone sometimes. And you don't even realize at mm -hmm. the time, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, if we just keep talking about it and just don't let it be the boys club, it doesn't need to be. It's not, that's not what it is at all, you know? So it's not all boys on the, on the board either. I'm on the board. Nope. <laughs> so. <That's right. laughs> Cool. Definitely love seeing all the buzz uh, over the last couple of weeks. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I've been around the game a, a very, very long time, it seems. And uh, I, I know many of the, the, the women, you know, personally uh, that have really stepped up their, their game. And I had had a chance to, to, to meet up with uh, Jennifer Smith last week as well uh, in Calgary. And uh, just, just hearing the, the bit of the buzz now, all of a sudden she's got a little bit more of a, of a drive into her type thing. It's just, it, it really is, it, it's a big wave, right? Uh, it, 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 the ripple effects of something so small um, as just getting it out into the community and let the community run with it. And now we, mm -hmm. we, we've seen how far this can go already. And uh, the, the, the tour itself is already on the verge of, of getting to that next level, I believe. And just seeing little initiatives like this uh, will help us reach those goals and, and get us to that next level. And, you know, that, uh, I know I've said it a few times, uh, but, you know, thank you very much, ladies, for, for your support of this. And, uh, yeah, key, keep it up. It's, uh, it's truly inspiring for, for everybody. Yeah, we can't, we can't thank you enough. Um, so Dexter, I guess, do we want to go ahead and start doing the raffle? Yeah, we can definitely do that. Let Dexter's me... got this all set up and, uh, for those that want to actually physically see the raffle, you can check on our Patreon page at five pin universe. Um, yeah. we will be posting it free of charge. You just have to log into the Patreon or you can obviously listen to the audio, which will be posted on Facebook, our SoundCloud account and all that good stuff. Yeah, definitely. There'll be a, a link that we can post later on. Um, but just the one rule with this is it always has to be a dice roll of more than five. So we're going to randomize this list at least five times. Um, if we roll a dice that's less than that, then we'll roll it again. So I think so, there was 117. Am I right? There is, in fact, 117. Yeah. I'm just going to transfer that over so we can see that the list is all there. Uh, let's roll the dice. Okay, so we're going to randomize it five times. Go excited right now. I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and the top three will be winning spots, right? Yes. Okay, so we're going to do three, two rounds, three rounds, four rounds. Okay, final mm -hmm. round. Let's see who our winners are. Okay, so. Uh, our first winner is Anita Givens. Our Anita. sec, yeah. Congrats, Anita! <laughs> Yay, Anita! <laughs> our uh, our second winner is Patrizia Rempel from Medicine Hat. Congrats! 
And our third winner is Stacy Weber from uh, from Calgary, proprietor of Topwave. Congrats, Stacy! Yay, Stacy! Awesome, fantastic. That's awesome. I'm that super went excited with that. So fast, I know. I know. <laughs> All that prep for a couple seconds. <laughs> yeah. That's really great. I'm awesome! Congrats, ladies. Yeah. We'll get a hold of you. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I'll contact or Carrie. You can maybe. Uh, I can, or we can. We can arrange something. We'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously the podcast won't be posted till probably around Thursday at ten in the morning again. Um, so we'll contact them shortly after that because we want everybody to listen and get their insight on it and all that good stuff. Um, but the podcast obviously isn't over and we hope everybody sticks around for a few more topics. Um, I know Adam had a couple topics he wanted to bring up and talk about. Yeah, well, I guess, uh, it, with the, the new season coming, um, I, I've actually spoken with a, a few people, uh, spoke with, yeah. uh, Brad Bradford a little bit today on it, actually. Uh, uh, just about trying to set realistic goals for the upcoming season. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, the league average or, uh, or anything like that. But, uh, uh, do you guys have goal setting, uh, in your, in the back of your mind at the start of a season? Um, if so, if, what, what's the criteria, uh, is there anything that you try to push yourself on? Who wants to start? So it's a really, <laughs> really tough question when, uh, I mean, every time that we go into something, we're, we're going out to win. I mean, that, that's, that's always the goal. So it, it's hard to set. I don't know. I'm bad at setting like long-term goals, but uh, especially with uh, Newfoundland coming up for Masters, that's that's mm -hmm. definitely the goal. So, um, work on a few things in my game. There's certain things I want to tweak and make sure that uh, are rectified from the end of last season, and then uh, focus on, you know, being in complete control for those six tournaments for Masters. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess my goals. The, is always be better than I was the prior year. So um, one way is obviously I didn't make master's team last year or open. Would, those would be goals. Um, but the WCBT would be to finish up higher on the on the qualifying list for the final year-end event, right? Um, and in order to match or to get to that, I got to work on my technique a little bit. I got to fix a few things here and there. But uh, just the general... I set a small goal beating last year. So whatever that takes to do that, that's what my goal is. Good goals. I think for me, I've, I've probably in the last decade, maybe taken the game a little bit for granted. Um, and I've lost a little bit of that fire in my belly. And I think the last couple of weeks for me has really uh, been a little bit eye opening not that things can, you know, I am still ach achieved great things year after year, but I think I've just taken a step back now and, and um, I just want to be a little bit more fierce, um, kind of play maybe the way that I played, you know, 15 uh, years ago. Um, it's really just a, a small uh, goal for me and, and it's uh, fire, fire in the belly right now. Um, I also have a goal of making the open. It's been a while since I was on a team here. So, um, that's definitely a goal for this year. I have a bad habit of picking a average number for league. Not often I hit that number and then I get to the number and then I kind of like, well, what have I done? And then a tank, but, um, it, I mean, it's, it's tough to pick a number and be like, I'm going to average 230 this year. And then have it get in your head and you blow it up. So I don't, I, I have a bad habit of doing that. That's my bad, good goal, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I definitely kind of have your, your thought on that, Carrie, uh, try to, try to push the envelope, try to improve. Um, it, it, even if, you know, you had a really good year in the open. Okay. Let's prove the masters somehow. Um, I, 
I knew about 10 years ago or so when, when I started taking the, the game for granted a little bit, like you're mentioning, Trace, um, I, I had no goals going into a season. I just kind of let everything play as it is, uh, assume everything is going to work out and, and mm -hmm. really not push the game or push yourself in the game. Um, so the one thing that I, I can say from personal experience over the last, you know, three, four years, especially, uh, is setting some, some realistic, but challenging goals. Um, I, myself, uh, I, I don't think an average goal is necessarily the, the, the be all end all. I, I know that's usually the first thing that, you know, most players will, will say, oh yeah, yeah, I got to average 240. I got to average 260 this year type thing. Uh, problem with that is it's very subjective to a single house. Um, and, and if you're trying to get on maybe a tournament circuit or you're, maybe you're just playing, you know, IP, uh, like you, you got to have some other goals other than just an average um, and, and, and try to find some sort of a practice time in even if it's every, you know, every couple weeks, every three weeks, just to get out there for like me, even, you know, 40 minutes just for a session, just to work on something right? Set those little mini goals because they will get you to another level on your big goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really think that's going to be part of my goals this year is to actually like schedule in real practice and not not once, you know, before a major tournament, but, you know, a couple times, you know, once a week even, you know, come out Tuesdays, play Thursday, play Saturday or Sunday or whatever and go from there. But uh, throw some, throw some balls without scoring um because like you said an, an average goal is really subjective and and ultimately setting goals you know to fix certain things in your game or or get more consistent with certain things in your game the average average results will come with that um but you got to focus on those things first agreed <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, anything on uh, Dexter's rulebook corner this week? Absolutely not. No new rules. Eh? <laughs> uh, how how to protect an ATM? <laughs> uh, nope, not for most guys. <laughs> they want it, they can have it, man. Well, I, I know there there was uh, uh, last week we didn't have the podcast, and we we put out the you know the question, Brandy, you know. You know, uh, questions from from the crowd, and uh, there there was three that uh, that I, I wrote down before we came on here. Uh, one I, I is uh, from uh, Eric Chos, and I uh, said uh, if there was one person uh, you wish you could have played a match or series against, who would it be? Uh, could be a current player or former player. Uh, I'll, I guess I'll go first. So being from central Alberta, there was always kind of a name that was always, always mentioned throughout the years. I never got a chance to meet him. Um, I know he's, his family's still a big part of the sport and stuff like that, but Jan Anderson, mm. I wish I had a chance to at least play against him or play with him in central. That would have been, um, something to be a part of, uh, not sure if he's still around the area or anything like that. Don't know, don't hear too much about him anymore, but um, definitely synonymous with uh, Central Alberta. Uh, for me, it's definitely got to be Tommy Stevenson. Uh, just he's had such a massive influence on our lives, uh, being our coach from your Bantams and the start of juniors, um, and always kept in touch to this day. We talk all the time and um, unfortunately, like our careers sort of like past each other. Uh, he's had his like physical limitations in the last couple of years, some health scares. And, um, that's sort of when we started to get better as well. So we never really had the opportunity to a, a play together or against each other. Um, but, uh, certainly nothing but love and respect for each other. So, uh, that, that would be the person for me for sure. Um, I'll go next, I guess. I mean, for me, um, it, it would be Bev Gigliak. Um, I did have the opportunity actually to play with her one time my rookie year uh, for Masters. But I think, you know, I was so young that I didn't really realize the impact um, 
that she drove for me. Like it, it, it really took like a good decade before, um, I mean, she, she really was a true role model for me from a women's perspective. So I would have to say, I, I would have loved to play with her a few, few more times. Is it with or against? Whatever you decide. Um, I, I, I don't know who I want to play. I mean, I could, it's, I'm not really as competitive as I used to be, but I mean, to get the opportunity like we had in Newfoundland that year, we won bronze to play with Bruce again would just be an absolute honor. And he was just unreal to play with. And we had such a good, um, group that we played with. And I, I would in a heartbeat play with him any day bowling. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> <The exercise. laughs> yeah. and I, I actually I, to kind of jump on the, that like play with the player and quite honestly that my answer would be for both here as well um never having a chance to play with bruce who you know growing up uh mm -hmm. he, he was the name uh finally moved to edmonton um, first year, missed the open cut. He makes the men's team and then retires while well, I'm not there. Mm -hmm. So, so that that uh, that will always sting because I, I always wanted a shot uh, to, to bowl with him. Uh, but I've also never played a three game match against him. And uh, again, that he was the player to to, to beat. Uh, we played you know quite a few uh, opens. We played uh, you know autumn opens, but it's not quite the same in that match. Uh, especially at a cash tournament, to, especially, you know, back when he was just almost unstoppable. Uh, just to be in that moment, to the, almost like a, like a yardstick type match, you, you know exactly where you're at in the sport playing against somebody like Bruce in that match. There was another question there, Adam. It would be, who would be your team you'd want to put together? Yeah, from uh, from Kyle Young, uh, he asked, uh, "Is there uh, a dream team per se that that you would want to see or play with uh, at an Open or Masters?" Hmm. Is that have to be <laughs> legends or current? <laughs> I both. Uh, he kind of left it open ended. <laughs> that's a that's a dangerous question. It is. <laughs> yeah. there, 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 there's so many, many. I mean, players. can you imagine this as a mixed team here? Who we need yeah. one more female, <laughs> we'd have a great time. Yeah. Tim will be back next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Obviously, Bruce would be, I think, pretty much on a lot of people's lists to be on a team with. Um, tell you the truth, Gino was one of the best teammates I've ever been on a team with, and I hope to be on many more teams with him with Central Alberta. Lynn Howell, that would have been cool to play on a team with him. Um, I, he's coached me a few times, but never got a chance to actually play on a, a Masters team with him. And then uh, going the mixed route, Jen Smith, Tracy Smith, uh, Bev gig luck if she was still playing like so many unreal players out there like michelle hoyle um playing against her in a few mixed battles it's there's so many so many especially in alberta and i might be biased here um but we have so many legends in our sport and so many current players that are at the top of their sport it's hard to nitpick i guess a, a dream team I would agree with you. It It is hard. I mean, I've been, you know, pretty blessed over the years to have a lot of different opportunities playing with Michelle Hoyle. Um, I've played with Lynn Howell. I've played with Brian Goodhope. Um, I played Jennifer Smith and I have been on, you know, over a decade of teams together. She is fierce and on any given day, I, I mean, I would, uh, play with her she's unbelievable but then there's lots of people that I haven't had the opportunity uh to play with like you know Mark Johnstone like in incredible player you know I, I I've I haven't played on a team with Adam like and 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 there's so many surprises too of people that you play with that are just 
like lovely good human beings and Nick Campbell is unbelievable to play with on a team so like I, I agree with you Carrie I just don't know if I could pick one team because there's just always so many different surprises um different personalities it's like fierce and fun all at the same time yeah I don't know, I, I, I've got a five-player masters team <laughs> of course you for, do, of course you do. For, 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 for sure I, I do it's uh uh, kind of a mix of, of old and new. Uh, obviously, myself, because uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to be. The, I you don't want to the... play with yourself. Uh, <laughs> Open ended. Uh, I don't want to coach this team. I want to play. Uh, Bruce and Gino uh, are, are, are right there. Uh, I'd love to play on a team with uh, Greg DeGrazia. Mm. Uh, I think he's absolutely phenomenal and. As much as I don't want to say his name, uh, I want to play on a team with Mitch one day. <laughs> yeah. It, it's it's tough. I don't know. I, I could pick a list of people that I haven't played with that I'd love to, but uh, Carrie, you're one of them because we've never had the opportunity. Uh, you need to start playing better at Masters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um mark miller i really want to play with mark um yeah, yeah. open-ended <laughs> uh again uh tommy tommy for sure and then i have to i have to throw in bruce even though i played with him lots of times i i just love to play with him one more time open-ended <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I agree though, Tracy. I think Annette would be. I've, I've never played with her, but her and I have had that conversation, and we've mm -hmm. always said, you know, she's like, "Come on, let's do it. Let's play. Yeah. I want to play together." And I was like, "Yeah, just got to work on my things." But yeah, that would be a dream to play with her as well, for sure. She's so passionate, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Really awesome. Yeah. And positive. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Who knows how long she'll be bowling because she took out pickleball with her husband and now apparently they're dominating that sport so yeah <laughs> <laughs> any other topics there Adam? uh the last one that i pulled up was from uh from katie hicks uh she asked uh have have well i don't know if it's to a general public or just you know yeah uh, uh, you know the podcast uh just say have we ever considered giving up the sport uh, or the competitive side of it, uh, and what has changed uh, there our mind uh, or kept us going uh, with it? Right. Mine's a simple no, so we can just move on here. <laughs> I might be a good person to <laughs> speak to this about. I mean, for me, I probably, the game changed for me so much when I moved to Calgary. Um, just the timing of my life and the transition of my life and, you know, moving to a city with a four-year-old and kind of being on my own, having no family here, um, just kind of reestablishing everything, most difficult, uh, time period of my life. And I, I was super challenged for the first, um, I'd say five years that I moved to Calgary. I'm just being transparent and honest. And it took me, uh, it took me a long time, and I got, I got sidetracked, just in terms of like having to raise, you know, someone without, um, without having any family here. Um, I took, you know, a step back um, in a lot of things in my life, and, um, you know, when I tried to come back to the game, it was almost like I, I kind of lost a little bit of the mindset, even though, you know, I still was fortunate enough. Um, to make masters or you know if I played the open I, I was fortunate enough to, to make the Calgary team but it was never really the same for me so I think now like you know my daughter's going into university she's 19 years old and my goodness that poses a whole new set of um, things to worry about and challenges but but Kaylin's a really she's a really good person um, and I feel like now like even last year I really wanted to kind of reset the game um and, and now i feel like i can be a lot more um committed so uh for me i'd say yes it's just like certain you know challenges that come into your life you get 
sometimes you just have to like focus elsewhere for a little bit, but it, it's okay if you want to come back. And um, it, it, it can come easily when you do come back to the game or it can be really challenging. And then, you know, how do you um, over, overcome that? Because maybe it's not as easy as it once was for you. Um, yeah, I honestly, I considered it pretty much every day for, you know, three years, probably. Um, it's, it's tough. It's, uh, it's overwhelming, uh, being, you know, uh, living in a bowling alley all day, every day and spending your free time, it, you know, bowling. And then spending your other free time in boardrooms and your other free time sitting here on podcast. But it, but that's, <laughs> that's kind of what's gotten me through it all. Uh, the, the game really changed with personal lives, having issues in the last, like I said, like three years. But having the opportunity to, you know, go bowling Thursday nights and sit down with, you know, a group of like my best friends. Um, and not give a crap about the bowling, realistically, except for winning matches off of Katie. Other than that, it really, it really doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, uh, doing well gives me opportunities to go, you know, away for a week with some of my best, my best friends around the country, right? So that's, uh, that's pretty much what keeps me going. And then, yeah, being involved with everything, it's, it makes it impossible to stop. <laughs> you can't you can't not play masters if you're on a masters board yeah. you can't not play the wcbt if you're mm -hmm. on the wcbt board you oh. can't you can't do it you gotta play you're, you're locked in now <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. pretty well <laughs> i don't know if i'm the best example because i haven't had a lot of very competitive years per se but um i haven't i haven't played masters in the last few years again it i mean playing in this is of no offense to anyone, but playing in BC is loads different than playing in Alberta. It's, it's a different level um, here. So moving from BC to Alberta, I mean, it's been hard because it hasn't been something that just was um, easier, I guess is a good way of saying it, but um, it's, it's tough. And I, I thought about coming back to masters, but it's, I mean, it's a hard mindset to get over where you're like, oh, I need to work a lot harder and I don't know if I can do it. I can't do it, you know? It, that I can't do it attitude is not right, but it's hard to get over that hump to change your mindset from, from I can't, right? Right. So, yeah. <laughs> well, simply yes, uh, many, many, many times. Uh, talked about retiring many, many times. Um, there's about a five or six year stretch there, um, probably from like 2012 to 17, 16, somewhere in that range, um, where I, I started absolutely hating the game. I hated bowling. I hated being around people. I hated, and they, these are the you know, bowling family, right? And, you know, you have that, those ups and downs with family all the time. And, you know, if things aren't going perfectly, then you're frustrated, you're mad, you're doing all that stuff. Um, it, it got to a boiling point uh, probably the summer of like 2006, 16, 17. Um, I, I had basically had it. I, I, I was still making money on the tour. I uh, wasn't going to nationals very often. And it's just a, I had no commitment level left. I uh, had a couple extremely good conversations. Uh, uh, one that will always stick out to that was at uh, Matt and Haley Cole's wedding and had a, uh, a good sit down about 10, 15 minutes with Greg Giglia. And, and uh, just as kind of discussing the, the, the whole bowling and, you know, the, at that point we were talking about the career and all that stuff too. Um, and uh, my reason for, for giving up necessarily, not retiring, they, it, it really struck a chord with him um, in, in just his words to me is basically what would that show your son, right? And, and it, it's the, the one thing that we'll, I'll always remember is, you know, what will it show your son uh, leaving a game when you're very competitive and then you want him to be competitive in another sport growing up? 
So what is that going to teach your son, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I had that uh, extremely, uh, honestly, it was kind of a life-changing 10, 15 minutes, which, uh, which uh, yeah, I, I own a, a beer or two for that. <laughs> um, and then, uh, then I started working with uh, Michael Cousier when he was still up in town. And uh, we barely bowled. Uh, we barely actually threw balls. We'd come down, you know, uh, once a week, once every couple of weeks when we had some time. And he just turned my mind to positive. And uh, not only for the bowling, but for life away from bowling. All of a sudden, now you start seeing things in a different light. And he starts becoming a positive person. People around him become positive because now you're not negative around them. And uh, then all, all of a sudden, you start seeing that, that those friends and family in the bowling world um, in a totally different light again. And then you become a little bit more excited about the sport. You go out there with a little bit more positive and positivity, and you, you start, you know, winning things again or you start qualifying again um all, all these things that you're missing when in the, the, the downtime so um you know kind of get back to, to you know the concept that, that we talked about earlier today just with uh you know the the the, fa- the bowling family that we saw over the last two weeks right those moments that will always from from bowling family to me uh is exactly what turned you know my bowling game around and then I've talked to, to, to the guys here a couple times as well, just being on this podcast weekly, um, you know, talking about the sport that now I'm starting to get more of a love for it again and wanting to succeed, wanting to play, looking for the next tournament. Um, yeah, and that, that certainly wasn't there three, four years ago. Yeah, I uh, totally see where you're coming from, Adam. And I guess I owe the listeners a little bit more explanation than just no. Um, I think everybody gets that that thought of um, maybe not to Adam's extent because he was still competitive, but where you're not being really competitive for a stretch of time and wondering what you're still doing out on the lanes and if you're wasting money and time out there and stuff like that. Um, I, I grew up in a family where sports was not number one, but it was definitely number two on the list. You made sure your family was good and you played a sport and mine was baseball when I was growing up and I played my heart's content as much as I could till I couldn't play anymore. And then my attention turned to bowling cause my family couldn't afford me to go play hockey or anything like that. So I went to a little bit cheaper sport and I fell in love with the game and I just want to be the best I can be at that sport no matter what it is um anybody that knows me if we go out to slow pitch tournaments and we're playing drinking games stupid little cornhole or beersby or something like that i'm all in i (laughs) want to win if you lose it's whatever but i want to be there i want to win whatever i'm playing at that's kind of who i am and like dexter said um going and bowling thursdays at short park and not really giving a flying F about the bowling has turned out to be great for my game because I can just go throw balls, work on a few things here and there, and not have to worry about the results, even though my team lets me know that I should care about the results, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so just a little explanation. It's not such a no. It's just I didn't give it a second thought. Well, uh, I think that's good. We've been for roughly about an hour. I'd just like to congratulate those winners again. Anita Gibbons, Pat Rempel, and Stacy Weber. We'll be getting in contact with you shortly after the podcast is released. And hopefully you listen to it before we contact you. It'll also be anticlimactic and you probably won't listen to the podcast. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but I'd just like to thank Jen and Tracy again, and especially Melissa Manor and Karen you guys are such inspirations to even give the time to come onto the podcast just to do this alone is uh, more than anybody expects. Your guys' support means a lot too. And thanks too. You guys are awesome. <laughs> You're welcome. Alrighty. Thanks again, guys. We'll, thanks, guys. Uh... Thanks, everyone. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, ladies.